If you're like me, then you probably have extremely fond memories of playing the original Xbox. From Fusion Frenzy to Halo, Ninja Gaiden, Tony Hawk, and even the Madden games. The fact is, Xbox had some real classics. And today, in this video, we're going to review how to get Xbox emulation up and running on your Steam Deck so that you can relive those glory days. Let's get started. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is decide how you want to access your games. Personally, I prefer having all of my games in my Steam game library. To achieve this, you can use the simple EmuDeck utility to handle all of the heavy lifting for you. Suffice it to say, EmuDeck will take care of installing Zemu for you, which is the emulator we'll be using, and will get you set up with everything else too, but we'll get to that later. There's also the option of getting your hands dirty and doing all of the configuration yourself. You can download the Zemu emulator from the Discover App Center, uh, and that should get you started. Everything in this tutorial should be applicable whether you choose to install Zemu uh, manually or by using EmuDeck. But to keep everything simple, we're going to be focusing on the EmuDeck method in this video. Now, I did make another video about how to actually get started with EmuDeck, so you should probably check that out here if you haven't got that set up already on your Steam Deck. Now, one more thing to note before we continue. Uh, you can choose to install EmuDeck on your SD card or on your internal storage. In this tutorial, I've actually installed EmuDeck on my SD card. If you've opted for the internal storage, then the path to the emulation directory should be slash home slash deck slash emulation. Otherwise, the path should be slash var slash run slash media slash MMC BLK 0P1 slash emulation. Okay, now that we have EmuDeck installed and all that other stuff out of the way, you'll want to copy over your BIOS files. I can't tell you where to get these files from, except to say that you can get them from your modded Xbox or from the internet. Now the question is, where should you copy these files to? I chose to place them on my SD card under the emulation slash BIOS directory in a folder called Xbox BIOS. It doesn't matter what they're called as long as you can find them. Now you might be asking, how did I copy these files to my Steam Deck? Well, I have my ROMs and BIOS files on my home server here. Uh, I've logged into that from my Steam Deck. I've got about 100 terabytes of storage on my NAS, so I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But if you're unsure how to copy files, I've actually made a few videos on this very topic uh, covering different techniques, mostly about copying files from your PC to your Steam Deck. You can check out the playlist up here uh, and pick which method works best for you. Okay, so once you've got your BIOS files copied over, you'll want to set up Zemu. So open up Zemu and click Machine System, and then click the MCPX Boot ROM option. And then choose the uh, corresponding file. It should be called something like MCPX 1.0.bin. And here's a tip. If you have your file stored on your SD card, you'll want to be able to navigate to that quickly for this process. So click on more locations and then click computer, then go to slash var slash run slash media slash MMC BLK 0P1. Uh, this will get you to your SD card. But before you actually go into the MMC BLK 0P1 directory, you can right click on it and then select add to bookmarks, which will save this location on the left panel and you should now be able to save a bunch of time. Next, we're going to go to the Flash ROM BIOS section and we're going to choose complex underscore 4627 v1.10.bin. Next, click hard disk and choose xbox underscore hdd.qcow2. And finally, select eprom and choose eprom.bin. Now each of these files or other versions of these files are required in order to boot the Xbox emulator. And once you get these done, we're actually done with the required configuration options. But there are a few other settings that we can do. In the display settings, for example, you can choose the internal rendering resolution. I generally keep my rendering resolution set to 2x as it makes for a crisper image. Although if you experience some uh, performance issues on the Steam Deck, setting it to 1x uh, does make more sense. And under general, you can opt to skip the startup animation. But before we move on to the next step, I gotta know something. Why haven't you liked that smash button yet? It's a great way to keep up to date with this channel. You can also subscribe to see more from us and what we're doing here. Now, I want to give a special shout out to Marcus Batson, one of the top tier Singularity members over on Patreon. It's because of folks like Marcus that I'll be able to keep the lights on here, and we do have a lot of lights. I just looked directly into one and now I can't see anything. Now the next most important step is copying over your ISOs. These are going to go in the emulation slash ROMs slash Xbox directory. 
Again, if you don't know how to do this, you can use the links below or in the card up here to figure out how to copy files from your PC to your Steam Deck. Next, we need to test to see if we actually have everything set up correctly. Choose machine, load disk, and then navigate to the directory you copied your ISOs to, and choose one of them and then click open. At this point, nothing should change. You should still see load an Xbox image. So click machine reset, and then the game should boot. If the game does not boot for you, you might have encountered an unsupported title. You can open your browser and go to xemood.app and search for your game in the compatibility section. Uh, if it's rated as playable or perfect, then you may want to double check some other things, like to make sure that your BIOS files are configured properly. You can also try other versions of BIOS files, which is something I had to do when I was writing this tutorial. Though I will say that the ones that I've highlighted here are the ones that I've had the most luck with. Finally, for troubleshooting, you can try another game and see if that one works. And if you still haven't found a solution and games aren't working, reference the uh, XEMU documentation. There's some good guides over there. There'll be a link in the description. Now, once you have everything set up, close Steam by right-clicking on the icon in the system tray and choose Quit. Now go to your desktop and find the Steam ROM Manager icon. Open that right up and click Preview on the left. Then click the Generate Applis button at the bottom. And after a moment, you should see all the ROMs that you've copied over. Now, if you have more than just Xbox ISOs in the emulation slash ROMs directory, then you will see them here as well. Click on Save App List and your Steam library should be updated with these new entries. All right, now we're ready. We can go back to game mode. You can do that by clicking the Steam icon in the bottom left and then logging out or by double clicking the desktop icon that says back to game mode. From here, you can go to your Steam library and then go to the non-Steam game section to see all of the ROMs that you have, or you can go to the collections tab and choose Xbox. And there you go. Launch any game and start having fun. Now there's one more thing we could do, setting up Xbox Live. And you did hear that right. There's a project called Insignia that has brought the original Xbox Live back from the grave. And it's possible to get set up with it using Zemu. If you want to see a tutorial on how to get set up with that, leave me a comment below because that is going to be a fun video to make. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video though. Did I miss something? Do you have more questions? Sound off in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. But for now, I think that's going to do it. I want to say thanks to the fine folks who make what I do here possible. It's because of them that I'm able to make videos just like this one. So thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can buy me a coffee as a patron, a YouTube member, or a ViewSync Premium subscriber. It's all greatly appreciated. Thank you for spending your time with me here today, and I'll see you guys in the next one.